If you have been looking to purchase a one-bedroom, you might have noticed that many new projects in the heartland areas do not offer this option anymore. And this is why in today's video, I'll be sharing with you why this is happening and how you as an investor can write on this piece of information as an opportunity and kickstart your investing journey even from a $600,000 property. Hello everyone, I'm Vivian and welcome back to my channel. Since 2012, developers have been using this formula to determine the maximum number of housing units they can build in a development that is outside the central area. So this can be done by simply dividing the gross floor area, also known as GFA, by 70 square meters. In 2019, a new ruling took place and instead of dividing the GFA by 70 square meter, the figure has now been changed to 85 square meters for condominiums outside the central area. Nine areas highlighted here will face an even more stringent requirements where the GFA will be divided by 100 square meters to work out the maximum number of units which can be built. Taking seaside residences as reference, it has a GFA of 67,584 square meters. Based on the old ruling, it can build up to 965 units. With the new ruling, it can now build up to 795 units. However, because seaside residences is located in Marine Parade, it is subjected to stricter guidelines where GFA have to be divided by 100 square meters. Therefore, if seaside residences land was purchased after 2019, they can only build a maximum of 676 residential units. From 965 to 676 units, there is a drastic drop of 289 units. And how does this affect the developer? Given the same plot of land, this will mean that developers can only build lesser units. Therefore, they are left with two options. Either they build a bigger one and two bedroom or they stop providing the one bedroom option and instead increase the number of big units such as the three, four and five bedroom. So I'm now going to use some examples to give you a clearer idea on how this ruling has affected developers in the current market. Take Passeries 8 for example, their smallest one bedroom is 517 square feet which shows that developers are building bigger one bedroom and explains why the entry price to get your hands on a unit like this can cost between 867 all the way to $960,000. Another trend was also spotted in dairy farm residences. Its smallest two-bedroom is 624 square feet with no one-bedroom in this development. Third, we have water gardens at Canberra. Its smallest two-bedroom is 646 square feet, also with no one-bedroom in the unit mix. With developers cutting down on the future supply of one-bedroom and smaller two-bedroom outside the central area, this will mean that there will not be a huge supply of small units coming into the market in the next five years. And this shows one thing, there is a chance that prices of the small units in the resale market will move upwards. And this is an opportunity for you if you're looking to kickstart your property investment journey, even if it means starting from a very small unit. Right now, I'm going to show you how we adopt a part rental and part appreciation strategy for your scenario. Take Park Rosewood which is situated in Woodlands as example. Based on March 2022, a one-bedroom which is 431 square feet here would cost about $565,000. The average rental in March 2022 is $2,000. With an interest rate of 1.8%, the monthly mortgage works out to be about $1,500 which consists of $888 principal and $635 interest. While interest is a form of expense, the principal amount will be returned to you upon the sale of your property. Hence, to calculate your monthly savings, we will take the rental amount of $2,000 minus interest payable of $635, less property tax $250 and maintenance fee of $212, you will get around $903 extra per month from rental. If we were to calculate based on a 5-year horizon, you have a total savings of $54,180. In consideration of the lack of small units in the next 5 years, there are two possible scenarios. First, if you were to sell your property at $620,000. Second, if you were to sell your property at $670,000. Assuming if your property sells at $620,000 and adding up the rental of $54,000, dollars 
you will save up a total of $104,000 in five years. If you were to sell a property at $670,000, you will save up a total of $154,000. And this is why adopting this part rental, part profit strategy can make you a good sum of money with small amount of capital invested. Of course, knowing how to find the right resale unit at a discount can increase your chances in making a better profit. And if you are interested to find out more, I have a full video on how we can find units like this. So next, I'm going to show you a two-bedroom in Park Rivera as an example. Based on past transactions, it will cost around $1.13 million for a 710 square feet two-bedroom unit. The rental ranges from $3,500 to $4,000. Say we take an average rental of $3,700 based on the calculation I used earlier, you will make a total of $109,000 on rental alone. Assuming you sell at $1.135 million, you will make $159,000. And if you were to sell at $1.14 million, this will take your earnings to $209,000. By the end of 5 years, if you were to combine your earnings of $209,000 together with your 25% upfront payment, you will have enough down payment to upgrade to a $1.7 million property. And this is how this form of false savings can help you to progress to your dream home that you ultimately want. Alright, and that is all for today's video. Should you require a systematic approach on how you can progress through property, contact me at my number below and I'll see you in my next one. Bye-bye!